Hi, this is Sean from Bowkey Cam Technical Support. Today I'm going to take you through a quick video on using the Bobcam for SolidWorks add on for laser plasma water jet. So, the first thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and open our file, which I have right here on my desktop, which is the water jet laser plasma example file. Left click it, hit open. So, we'll go ahead and open up our file here. It takes a little bit of time. So the very first thing we need to do is we actually need to go ahead and go to tools, add-ins, and enable our Bobcam for SolidWorks add-in, which you have both the active add-ins and you have it where it will start up every time with the software. I'm going to go ahead and just use the active for now. I'm going to click on that, hit OK. It's going to go ahead and load the module. The important thing to note here is we have this Bobcam menu up here. Uh, which gets added when the add-on is enabled and it's going to give you a couple of different options such as settings default and settings part where you can set system tolerances um, along with some other you know, just general specific what color your, your default toolpath colors are along with uh, your chain select tolerance and your as I said before the system tolerance another important thing to note here when you go to help Bobcam help it's going to give you a couple of different options for licensing along with your Bobcam help menu and a Bobcam support menu here which is going to launch you to our support website um, first off you're going to have to go ahead and activate your license now you have two different options here you have the activate online and you have the activate license option Activate license is for activating the license uh, through our registration department. If you contact them, they can go ahead and walk you through the steps for activating the the license for your Bobcam for SolidWorks. You also have the activate online, which you can find on, generally on the lower left hand corner of your invoice, uh, both the license ID and the password for your license. It's just going to look just like this menu right here. I'll just go ahead and cancel out of that. So we're going to go in here. Um, the Bobcam uh, feature tab right here, you can see right here is just kind of a rectangle. Uh, it's it's really just looks like a pocket as, as far as it's concerned. Um, and that icon does not change. We're going to go ahead and expand our water jet laser plasma example. Um, if you've worked with our standalone software, this is generally defined as our cam part up here, but in the Bobcam module, um, what it actually just labels from what the part file name is. We're going to right click on milling tools, we're going to go to default, and we're going to go to current settings. Now the very first thing we need to do is we need to define what our machine type is. Now you have a laser, you have a mill. You have plasma water jet and you have some other custom design ones. You want to go ahead and add your own and click the add button. And we'll type in example machine. We're going to change the axes of the machine. We'll leave that at three axis. We're going to hit OK. And our type is not going to be milling. We're going to set this to water jet. Um, machine definition you can leave this section alone along with the multi-axis posting uh, these are not required for your laser plasma water jet uh, setup but we do need to go into posting you have your NC file extension which is always going to be a period and then the extension that the machine takes now please note that you always need to make sure that that period sits in front or else it's just going to add whatever's typed in here into the file name and the file is not going to have an extension associated with it you're then going to go to your post processor select your post processor um, and you're going to pick one from the for which machine that you're using uh, you can find more post processors on our website at www.bobgad.com mouse over support and click on post processors on the left hand side um, and then it's just going to be a pull down menu which you would just choose your version number as V3 and select your machine as a water jet laser plasma um, machine 
So we're going to go ahead and select just our default water jet down mill post um, for it. And we'll go ahead and just change our NC file extension to a .cnc file. We'll go ahead and hit OK here. So water jet laser plasma is a very, very simple setup. All we're going to do is we're going to go to stock wizard. Actually, first let's go to milling tools. Let's go to part current setting. We'll go to machine parameters up here. Click the three dots here on the right hand side in this rectangular box. And we're going to switch our make to the example machine that we just made here. We're going to go ahead and hit OK. It's going to update the type to a water jet. And this is going to be important because it's going to limit the number of options that you can select uh, in the cam tree um, to a profile along with the appropriate picture for the tool that's being used. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK. We're going to right click on Million Tools. We're going to go to our stock wizard. Now you have a couple different stock types. You have a cylindrical stock type. You can use wireframe. You can use the whole solid, which what that's going to do is when you launch it in the simulator, it's going to, how the solid shows on the screen is exactly how the solid is going to show in the simulator and the stock is actually going to be formed. And you also have another option here for an STL. What the STL model does is you can bring in an STL file if your stock is going to be, uh, say, starting from a casting and you're just taking something off of the edges. Um, this isn't as widely done in water jet, but it, it does happen from time to time. So you have different options here. You got a bounding box. You can also manually enter. Uh, the inner value is always going to be based off of the SOLIDWORKS origin. Um, but what we're going to do, we're going to go and just use our bounding box option. Um, your extrusion direction, everything else here. Um, is already going to be set up if using the bounding box, but you do have the option uh, if you want to manually draw your stock in, you would use our wireframe option here and then select the edges of the stock. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK. We're going to go to machine setup. We're going to right click and hit edit. Now we need to define where the location is for the origin for our part. What happens is, if you notice, it's going to go ahead and automatically generate a 3D sketch here. And as soon as you go ahead and hit the check mark OK, that 3D sketch is going to go ahead and get deleted. Um, but it gives you the options for point selection um, for use uh, with the software and for uh, ease of use for creating the origin for your part. So we're going to go ahead and use the pick origin option. We're going to pick the lower left hand side here at the top of our stock. What we're going to do, we need to adjust our Y axis to face this line. And then we're going to go ahead and just flip our Z, so our X faces. So all of our cuts are going to be in the positive direction. You have your options for setting different work offset numbers down here. You also have an option for drawing your own UCS through the SOLIDWORKS UCS manager, um, which is just going to be uh, insert reference geometry coordinate system if you have manually defined coordinate systems are in your part or you can use the option that was shown prior where you work off of the edges that are shown. So we're going to go ahead and hit the check mark OK. Let it run through there. As you note that the 3D sketch has been deleted and no longer shows in your feature tree here. So what we're going to do here, now there's a couple of different options that you can use for creating toolpath for your part. Uh, what I like to do is I like to do all my inner features uh, as one operation and then all my outer features as a separate operation. So we're going to right click here. Notice that you have access to mill 2 axis. Um, the values down here you can ignore. These only relate if you also have our multi axis package, but they will show highlighted um, if you do have that additional add on uh, if you have a mill. Um, to use. So we're going to go ahead and click mill to axis. Notice that you only have the option to do profiling. We're going to go to next. We're going to select our geometry. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and use our cut extrude. We're going to go ahead and use this sketch right here. And we're going to use the whole sketch right here. And we're going to check. And we're going to go to next here. It's going to show us a picture of what our geometry selection is. 
please note that construction geometry will not select unless you manually select it from the sketch. And go to next here, posting, you have different options. Um, now work offset number, you can manually change the work offset number for a specific part and you have plenty of different options here um, to choose from. So we're going to go to water jet tool. Notice that you can select your diameter, the cutter being on the brace of on and the vacuum assist if you have that option on your machine um, to, to enable. Uh, it gives you the option for feed rate, how long you want it to dwell for, the pressure type, along with an arch slowdown. That way you can slow down uh, for overspray in the case of a water jet when going around an arc. Um, let's go ahead and set the diameter to 0.014. We're going to go to our patterns page. We're going to go ahead and use our system compensation here. We want to compensate to the left hand side. We're going to go to parameters. Nothing in here you need to worry about or concern with. Um, these generally relate only to milling. Um, but if you do want to, you could always leave a side allowance if you plan on doing an additional operation after you're done cutting it on the water jet. We're going to go to our leads page. We'll go ahead and set a right angle lead in here. Um, general rule of thumb is you want to use um, half the diameter of the tool. Uh, in my situation, I actually want to leave a um, hundred thousandths there uh, for the lead in, and you have an option to set an overlap. Um, in a lot of cases, when you're working on a plasma, you can have the option of where it's going to leave uh, additional material where you lead in from. That gives you the option so it runs a little bit past to clear um, that additional material that didn't get cleared out while running it on the plasma for the entire um, cut of the, the, the part. So we're going to go to our corner types here. Um, you have different options here. You have the external corner and you have internal or inter internal corner. Uh, sorry about that. Um, where you can choose it for it to go around. Uh, a square uh, corner. Um, I like to use sharp. Um, really it's going to be up to you. Rounds useful if you want to go slower around the corner. That way it trig it will trigger our arc slowdown value here. It'll trigger that feeder while going around the corner. And then you also have your machine sequence page which you can select the ordering that it sorts or how it does the cuts along with where you want it to start from as far as for the order. So we're going to go ahead and hit compute here. We're going to go ahead and compute our part. Now you can see the toolpath right there. Let's go ahead and blank the stock group. It's a little bit hard to see there. You can see the toolpath here. Note that our lead in is going to be a little bit long. Um, so we, we have the option here to go to our leads page. We can go back in. We'll change that to 50 thou. We'll recompute it and it'll readjust. You can always cross check it on the screen before uh, posting out. So, last thing we need to do is we need to go to our machine setup, create a secondary profile, hit next, select our geometry, we'll go to the boss extrude. That's my primary geometry there. We'll check the box here. We'll go to next going to show our geometry there in the lower right hand corner again uh, for what's chosen. We're going to go to our water jet tool. We're going to set that to 014. We'll go to next here. Uh, you can change the tool label. Uh, a lot of water jet posts don't actually include the tool label being output uh, as in most cases you'll just be running it with the same tool. Um, again you can set your feed rate, pierce dwell, and an arc slowdown. Um, we'll go to our patterns page, we want our system compensation to the left hand side and we can go to our leads page, we want to set that to a right angle because that's an outer cut, I want to actually add additional to it just to be, get a little bit more clearance there so we'll go ahead and do that hundred thousandths there, corner type, all these are fine, we'll go ahead and hit the compute button and now notice that the, it didn't actually put the toolpath on the outside of the part, it put it on the inside of the part. All you have to do to correct that is right click start point, 
select reverse direction, right click and hit compute. I'm going to go back to our normal view here. It's going to go ahead and flip the direction that it's running from and go ahead and place that toolpath on the correct side that you're working with. The only thing left we have to do is go ahead and post it. So all you have to do to post is right click milling tools, go to post. It's going to go ahead and post that code for you.